Hello, and welcome to episode 24 of the Stitching Over the Days podcast. My name is Constance, and I currently reside in Columbia, South Carolina, as I pursue an advanced degree. I want to thank any new viewers and also any returning viewers for taking a moment out of your day to hear all about my sewing, knitting, and crochet adventures. Also, you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Cleo, C-L-E-O, C-M-C, and also we have a Ravelry group, which is uh, quite a bit of fun, stitching over the days. Also, there is a blog with the show notes, yarningoverthedays.wordpress.com. So, I will not be talking with you long today, and I anticipate that the talking portion will be short, but I did want to share um, at the very end of this episode, a me may may recap or wrap up. And so I have some finished objects to share with you, two finished objects. I wanted to talk about uh, one of my works in progress. I've been working on it a little bit, but steady. I've been slow and steady. And also the archive treasure I will share with you. And I just wanted to talk a bit about the Kim Hargraves along that will officially start on July 1st. And I apologize for the noise outside. So the last episode, I was um, sharing my Martin Story design, the Rossetti top. Um, it is a design, well, I just said it. It's a design by Martin Story. And I was um, inspired to start the project because I just fell for the yarn. It was Rowan's Denim Revive, a new yarn uh, by Rowan. And my friend Karen created a top in our knitting circle with this yarn. And I just knew I wanted to create a top with it also. And so, I decided to join the Martin Story Knit Along that is being currently hosted by Prudy Knitting. And so I joined the um, Knit Along and my goal was to complete it by May 31st. And I more than met my goal and I actually finished uh, the top quite quickly. I think within less than a week. So I wanted to share with you that top. So this is the top and this is Rowan's Denim Revive, the color is Air Force. Um, they have about five colors in this type of yarn, and this is my favorite, even though the other colors, as I've stated in the previous episode, are quite lovely. And I hope to use this yarn again in the future. And it went quite well. The um, instructions, oh, let me show it to you. The pattern is from this book. This is um, Rowan Summerlight DK. And I'll try to get an image of it. Even though I think I've stated that the images, they're just all right in the book. Because so as you can see, it's a really nice, simple summer top. And I think um, the yarn I chose, I just think it was perfect. I wore it. Um, during me May May, after I finished it, I wore the next day with my um, high waist shorts. And I actually also wore, even though I didn't take a picture of it, I changed clothes later on in the day. But when I went home and visited my parents, I wore it when we did a quick run to McDonald's in the morning. So I just threw it on with another pair of shorts. And it's really just a nice relaxed fitting top. It's definitely more relaxed fitting than any of my, um, more of my signature style um, like this top here, which is more form fitting. This has um, a bit more positive ease, which I quite like because I it gets very hot in Alabama and South Carolina. And so it's just perfect. And it's a really nice relaxed fit, but it does have a bit of shaping as you can see in the waist. I did not block this uh, garment. The Denim Revive is made with recycled denim and cotton. And so I simply steam pressed the uh, garment and I actually, first I backstitched the pieces. And before I get into that, I just want to thank everyone for chiming in um, in the previous episode, telling me about your preferred methods for either seaming first or blocking first or blocking first and seaming. And it seems like it may depend on what you want to achieve um, from it. So um, if anyone is curious, the comment section was quite helpful and I just loved all of the advice. And also in the Ravelry group, um, some uh, people chimed in on which method they preferred. And so for this garment, I think that I actually seamed it first. 
and I did something different. I actually backstitched all of the um, pieces together because as you know, like when I did the Polina cardigan, I did the mattress stitch on the side and I used the back stitch for the sleeves. But for this garment, I did back stitch for every seam. Um, simply because the book said it had back stitch as an option first and so I just went with it and I wanted to see how it worked out and I think it worked out quite nicely. Okay, so I think that I've uh, stated everything. I do know that I went down a needle size to get gauge and I think it was one needle size, but I'm not completely sure. So if you wanted to know the details, please check my Ravelry page um, for it. So I do think I recorded footage of myself wearing the top and also I know I have images. So I will insert all of that footage here. Okay, that is it for the Rossetti top. And as I've stated, I entered it already um, into the Prudy Knitting um, Knit Along. And I have another work, uh, not a work in progress, <laughs> but another finished object. This was a project that was spur of the moment. Um, I just wanted to try it out. I was looking in my Kim Hargraves um, book because I was thinking about designs that I wanted to do for the Kim Hargraves along which will be a six month knit along and when I saw this pattern in the book it's called the birch uh, it's called birch and it was a crochet design and I just thought it was so beautiful in both colorways in the book she had images so I'm going to show it to you um, I'm not sure Leah my niece is behind the camera she's helping me Okay, and this is the um, hat. It's quite nice, and it's a crochet design, and I think it's quite elegant. Um, in this book, she used the Soft Yacht DK, but I didn't use the Soft Yacht DK. Um, our local yarn store had a recent um, shipment of the hand knit cotton, and I wanted to try it out. And so I chose the hand knit cotton in the color. At crew. I can't believe I didn't write that down, um, but I think that's it. And it is so nice. It has this uh, pearlescent finish to this cotton that I absolutely love. And I, as you all know, I'm just a sucker for uh, crochet lacy things in natural colors. So that's why I chose this. And here it is. And I'm not going to try the hat on, but this gives you an idea. And because they use the Soft Yacht DK, um, that has a bit more yardage so I omitted four rounds in this pattern and I stated which rounds I omitted in my Ravelry notes if you were curious and as I've stated I can't try it on with my hairstyle today but I did uh, get pictures in the hat I don't think I recorded footage simply because it's a hat but the hand knit cotton um, is really nice and it feels great and I did not block it I just simply um, what did I do yeah, I just crocheted it and then I wore it the next day and I finished it in one night and my mother has requested a version and I'm going to make hers in white because I'm making her a crochet white top and that would be nice. She's probably going to wear it together and I know that she's going to wear it. She wears hats a lot so she's going to wear it with other things also. Um, that is it. I'm trying to think of anything else. I used the recommended hook size. I did not check gauge. I usually don't check gauge with hats or um, other garments. I'm removing Sarabi's hair from the hat. And I did wear this. I find that the hat comes in handy even though I'm like, I'm not a big hat person. But especially when my hair is out like this in this style, um, in the morning I will usually have it braided. And so if I need to do a quick run then I'll put um, this hat on and I'll just wear it outdoors or to a quick breakfast run like we did when I was at home. I also wore this hat um, in the morning because my hair wasn't done. <laughs> and I think it's quite stylish. 
So that is it, and um, I'm not sure if I said it already, but if I didn't, I will uh, include the footage of myself wearing the hat here. That is it for the finished objects. I hope I cover everything. I think I did. I took notes. And I wanted to share um, the progress in one of my um, current work, well, the current work, work in progress that's been getting all of my attention. And that's my anemone top, a design by Marie Wallen. And I'll show you a picture of it. And it's a blend of knit and crochet. So, I'm excited because while I was home, I did complete the front or back. It's made the same portion. And as you can see, it's just stockinette. And it's white. And already it is a bit, so it has um, a few little spots that are kind of dirty. So I will be doing a complete soak and wet block for this garment instead of just the samples instead of the sting press that I usually do with this and the yarn is um, Rowan summer light for apply this is my second time working with the yarn and I quite quite like it so I have started the back piece and I didn't make much progress I have my niece and nephew visiting with me for a couple of weeks and so we've been doing something pretty much every day so this is the progress I've made on the back but maybe I'll have time to knit on it um, tomorrow or maybe some tonight if I can edit this video pretty quickly we shall see but I'm excited about that I did not um my goal was to complete this top by May 31st and as you all know we are now in the month of June and I have not completed it but I have been working on it steadily because I really want to complete it um, before I cast on any of my Kim Hargraves designs and so I think I have time to complete it before the um, Kim Hargraves along okay I wanted to uh, talk about the archive treasure today I'm wearing a Myrna cardigan. I was actually wearing a Myrna cardigan the previous episode, but that was in my yellow Myrna cardigan um, that was made with Miss Babs, Yalza, and Squash Blossom. But this Myrna cardigan is made out of Nick Pick's Wool of the Andes. The color is Whirlpool. It's a beautiful blue. And recently I changed out the buttons. It used to have red buttons on its cardigan, but I found the red buttons to be quite limiting. And so I changed it to a more neutral kind of grayish button that I found on sale at Hobby Lobby for 50 cents. And I'm wearing it, um, I'm not sure if I'm in the shot, with my um, Holly Burn skirt and my Agnes top. And of course it has that keyhole back to it. It's a really lovely pattern. Oh, and my headband. I did so that. And that is um, a tutorial by the Crafty Pinup here on um, just checking my time. Um, the Crafty Pinup here on YouTube. And it's a free tutorial. And I think she calls the video um, it's called Retro Headband. Okay, I'm going to take a break and then I'll come back and talk about the Kim Hargraves along and Amine May recap. So in the previous episode, I mentioned that we're going, to, I'm going to be hosting a Kim Hargraves along and the official start date is July 1st. However, I went ahead and started a um, thread in the Stitching Over the Days um, group. And so that was my nephew I was looking at him, but uh, in the Stitching Over the Days group and in the thread, oh my goodness, we've been having so much fun. We've been uh, chatting quite a bit, talking about our plans and as you all saw from my previous finished object, I've already um, finished uh, Kim Hargraves' design. So, and I think um, a few people have already cast on and started their projects. And early, getting an early head start is completely fine. <laughs> I 
that's my nephew. He's just wiggling. Okay, getting a head start is completely fine. And so, um, it's actually highly encouraged. So, um, I the main two projects, I do have two projects set in stone. Well, before I start talking about my projects, I just wanted to uh, give a quick um, recap of, we will start July 1st. That's the official start date. Also, the design can be any Kim Hargrace design. It could be new design, it can be an old design because she's been designing for quite a while now. It can be um, a garment, it can be an accessory, it can be knit, it can be crochet. And it simply has to be a Kim Hargrace design. And if you choose to use yarn that's not um, rowing yarn, that's fine also. As long as it's a Kim Hargrace design, also feel free to double dip to put in as many entries as you um, want to and then the knit along ends December 31st at the end of this year and I'm thinking of ideas I've already um, gotten a few um, of the giveaways and we're going to try to do multiple giveaways also it is open to um, what is it it's open to why am I having a mind blank it is open to knitters nationally and internationally worldwide it's just a global knit along and I'm just encouraging everyone to join in and have fun so I've gotten a bit of a head start I haven't officially cast on the actual project but I did mention that I wanted to make the stunning cardigan and here is an image of it and it's a beautiful cable pattern. The cable um, pattern is very intuitive. When I was doing the gauge swatch, I memorized the cable pattern by the first repeat. And I'm going to be using the suggested yarn, which is Rowan Hand Knit Cotton. However, I'm using the K Facet colorway in this most beautiful color, which I forgot the name of, but it's right here. And Gentian, it's a beautiful royal blue. It's stunning. And it makes me so happy. And here is my swatch with the cable pattern. It is so, so nice. And I stated this yarn is just, oh. um, when I did the gauge swatch, I blocked it and um, I just used the soak product and I blocked it in cold water and I let it dry. And I just think that this is gonna be a cardigan, cardigan that I just love. So yes, I did my gauge swatch. So that's a definite project. I also didn't plan to share, but since I'm talking about the Kim Hargraves one and I'm all excited about it, let me share with you the yarn I have planned for my heart and cardigan, which was the first Kim Hargraves design that I just fell for. So, this is the heart and cardigan. And it is a beautiful crop jacket. You know I love crop styles because it looks gorgeous with high-waisted pants and skirts and dresses. And I also have plans to make, I can't think of the pattern name now, but a pair of McCall's high-waisted trousers, which are in my Make 9 uh, for the year. And I'm sadly behind in my Make 9. But I'm using the suggested yarn for that, which is Rowan Soft Yacht DK in this beautiful color, Lantana. A beautiful pink with undertones of that yak. So those are my plans. Also, the group, the thread that we started is so helpful. Um, quite a few um, Ravelers have chimed in and told places where you could get supplies. Um, for example, one of the gar garments I'm going to try to add into the Kim Hargraves along uses bees. And someone told me um, a place to get the bees on sale. Also, um, a couple of um, yarn shops are mentioned for having sales on Kim Hargrave's books. So if you wanted to look through that thread and um, check out those sales, which may still be going on, then you can get some Kim Hargrave's um, previous books that she made or back issues um, at such great prices. As you can see behind me, I, um, I took advantage of those sales and I added uh, quite a few of the older Kim Hargrave's uh, books uh, to my collection. And I wish I had time to uh, share it with you all. One of the um, books is a big favorite of mine. It's the Indie Go collection. Maybe I'll talk about it as we get further into the Kim Hargrave's along. 
So feel free to start thinking about it and I hope you'll join us. We're gonna have quite fun, many giveaways. Um, well, I don't wanna say many, like it's gonna be an overload, but we're gonna have multiple giveaways and prizes. And also it's just really helpful. A lot of advice has already been given in the thread and I'm just so grateful. Okay, that is it for the Kim Hargraves along. Um, I'm going to now talk about Me Made May. Me Made May completed yesterday, yay! And I was able to participate in every single day, even when traveling and when I was quite tired some days. But I was wearing that outfit that I made anyway, so why not quickly snap a picture? So what did I learn from Me Made May? I did get um, rid of quite a few things in my closet already. My niece is here and we went through some things and she chose the garments that she wanted and that she liked. Others um, I'm going to take home and have my other uh, nieces take a look through. And those garments that they don't want, they will be donated. Then, I, what did I um, notice? I noticed that there was a definite decrease in novelty print. Um, I love novelty print and I still do. And I didn't wear it as much as I have in the previous years, um, but I still wore my Rifle Paper Company fabrics quite a lot, and I always felt really great in those pieces. I just felt wonderful, and those are novelty prints because um, they usually feature an animals and foliage and things like that. Um, I went swimming with my, not swimming because um, we just pretty much went to the pool, but I went to the pool with my nephew and I was wishing that I had a swimsuit that I'd made. Instead, I had to purchase one. So that is a goal to create a swimsuit. And one other thing that I would have liked to add to my Me May May were jeans. As you all know, I've been meaning to uh, sew a pair of skinny jeans using Deer and Doe's saffron um, pattern, but things just keep getting in the way of me starting those jeans. So hopefully by the next year of Me Make Me, I will have a pair of jeans because I think that would have been a really great addition um, to just wear with um, easy tops. Um, but other than that, I'm really pleased. I just adding, the only two things that I said I would like to add was um, a swimsuit and a pair of jeans. And that's it. But other than that, I felt really great in um, having a good array of garments and I didn't get bored and um, I felt that the garments were good for switching it up and changing it up and um, yeah I'm really happy and I also appreciate that I met the girl. My goal was to identify those objects that didn't spark joy, that I weren't using, that were just sitting in the closet and I think I did a great job of weeding those garments out. Um, so that is it. So every day for me May May. I have not only taken pictures, but I've recorded footage, video footage, because I find that it's very helpful to show an outfit or a garment, well for me, from every angle, because I like to see how it fits and how it sits, how it drapes, how it flows. And so I did that uh, every day for me, May May, except for when I went to the wedding. It was such a full day, I came home and then I just took off my uh, wedding outfit. And so that is not included. Um, the picture is on my Instagram page. Also, there's another footage. I did record footage of myself wearing another dress, but it's kind of shaky. And so I don't know if I will include it, but I will include most of the footage, um, about 99% of the outfits. And um, I will include that here uh, following the end of the video. But that is it for today's episode. Thank you for taking a moment out of your day, out of your schedule to hear all about my crafting adventures and so i'll end it here and i'll insert that me made me footage bye